it, it's uh, an exciting day. I mean, Virgin um, has gone into the Hyperloop business um, and we've invested in the company that is in uh, the lead as far as developing Hyperloop, which will now be called Virgin Hyperloop. Um, and Virgin Hyperloop, just to give you an example of what it's capable of, uh, it'll be a train that um, goes into a tunnel uh, that levitates mag on, on magnetic levitation um, and will travel at speeds of uh, over 600 miles an hour, airline speeds. Um, so, um, you know, one day, if we can get permission to do it, we could do London to Edinburgh um, in under an hour. At Virgin, we love to invest in new cutting edge technologies, um, whether it's um, planes or uh, trains or, or spaceships. Um, and, and, we, and we want to invest in you know, the absolute best technology. Hyperloop One, which this company has been, fought, been called to date, has been beavering away uh, outside Las Vegas in the desert, um, uh, t you know, t testing, uh, uh, testing um, s smaller models of, of what Virgin Hyperloop will become. Um, and it's going extremely well. So, um, you know, so we, we feel it's a, a, very, a, a very exciting time for Virgin to get involved. The, the, the technology itself can do numerous things. It can transport freight at, at, at tremendous speeds. It can transport people at tremendous speeds. Um, it can transform docks, for instance. I mean, like if you give an example, there's, there's one project that uh, Virgin Hyperloop are looking at uh, where there's a, a, an enormous dock in a prime site in the Middle East. And, um, and by unloading the goods out at sea on a little island, putting it into Virgin Hyperloop, they can whisk those goods under the dock and, and lorries can come and pick, it up, pick them up right inland. So all that dock space can then be turned into valuable, um, uh, valuable housing and, um, and people can actually enjoy the beauty of the sea rather than um, dock land being used for it. I was completely blown away. I mean, I think, um, uh, you know, it's just, it's strange just going out into the Las Vegas desert and seeing this enormous tunnel running, running across the desert. Uh, and then, uh, and then um, seeing this, the, the, this, uh, the, the, this hyperloop just taking off and going, going, going along the tunnel. Um, and, uh, and actually the, the chief engineer used to work for Virgin Galactic and so uh, he's somebody that, that we know well and he's a you know, brilliant, brilliant person and uh, has done fantastic things with, with um, developing hyperloop to the, to the stage it is. I mean, Virgin will help Hyperloop in a lot of different areas. Obviously, we, we are in the train business in the UK. So one of the things we'll do is sit down with the government and show them, show the British government the capabilities of what Virgin Hyperloop could do for, for, for people in the UK. Um, but um, Virgin's an international company. And um, we think that, um, you know, we're, we're in discussions with the Russians, with the people in the Middle East, with people um, in, obviously in America and other places, and, and I think there, there are many, many places that Hyperloop can be used. I mean, the exciting thing from here is that, Ver that Virgin Hyperloop should be able to be operated, um, you know, in maybe three or four years' time. So we're, we're not talking about, um, you know, many years off. Um, and, um, uh, and so, you know, and so uh, discussions with governments are already going on about um, putting Virgin Hyperloop into you know, various countries around the world. Yeah, another exciting thing about um, Virgin Hyperloop is you, you could have a situation where you have, um, it, let's say, uh, a company in, in London can have some pods from Hyperloop actually at the company, and then the people can just get in the pods at the, at the company. Uh, the pod then uh, goes along and shoots down the tunnel, uh, attach or gets onto the track and then and then heads off at magnetic high speed of 600 miles an hour all the way to the far end to say to Edinburgh and then the pod can drive out and 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 go to the company's headquarters the other end uh, you know these are the, and these are the sort of things that can be possible with Virgin Hyperloop they can the tunnels can be above ground or, or below ground so for instance uh, you know you could put them above uh, canals or you could put them uh, you know above a current train track or alongside a current train track 
um, or you could put them underground. You, you know, you can you can you can use any, any any methods you like. And the 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 um, magnetic levitation uh, is not that dissimilar to when people in in our childhood days went into a shop and you saw these little uh, tubes which people would put <laughs> put the thing in and, and 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 it would shoot off. The future, the, fu the future is becoming closer, <laughs> closer year by year, um, and very exciting.
as Virgin Hyperloop One, we'll be able to create an incredible customer experience for people around the world. From entering the pod, you should be able to feel very comfortable. There should be something that reminds you of the safety and the experience and the comfort that you've experienced before. I still remember the first time I went on Virgin America. As I entered the plane and I saw the lights and the music, I realized that something had changed in the airline industry. And that was a direct reflection of Richard Branson and the Virgin Group's vision of how to treat not just the product design, but the customer experience in a way that created a world-class experience for everyone. 